Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for Living Local, your lifestyle show for all things Charleston and beyond. I'm Ashley Mazervi. It's Medical Monday here at East Cooper Medical Center and today we're taking a look at how two low country plastic surgeons are treating a birth defect that according to the Centers for Disease Control impacts thousands of babies across the United States each and every year. Medical Monday, sponsored by East Cooper Medical Center. Joining us today, Dr. Klein here at East Cooper Medical Center. Thanks for having me today. Thank you. All right, so today we're talking about cleft lip and cleft palate. First of all, tell us what those are. What is cleft lip and cleft palate? Cleft lip is a birth uh, anomaly where the lip doesn't completely fuse, mm -hmm. and it's usually in this area here. It runs into the nostril. It can be on one side or the other side or both sides. Cleft palate is an anomaly where the palate, the roof of your mouth, doesn't, oh, okay. doesn't fuse. And you can have isolated cleft lip or isolated cleft palate or what we see very commonly, uh, a cleft of the lip and a cleft of the palate occurring at the same time and running together. You know, I have to be honest, I thought that a lot of times this happened in like third world you know, countries as far as, but it's actually pretty prevalent here in the United States as well, right? Yeah, I think um, there may be some, there are some differences in frequency in different ethnic groups, okay. but it uh, happens approximately one in every thousand births kind of um, as a whole, uh, more frequently in some groups, less frequently in others. It's just that in the United States, we fix them promptly, okay. and that's not true of all places. Talk about fixing them promptly. What, are you talking about when they're much younger, it's better to go ahead and take care of that? before they get to become adults? A absolutely. Okay, yeah, <laughs> um, the, early, the sooner the, the better. The earliest we would fix a cleft lip would be about two months of age. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes um, our colleagues in maxillofacial prosthodontics mm -hmm. um, take interventions to narrow the cleft and that can eat up some time and that could delay the closure till five or six months, but it's worthwhile because it makes the clo closure easier. The cleft palate would almost never be repaired before nine months of age, and sometimes we would delay it in some circumstances to a year and a half of age. So what are some of the ways that this, aside from the cosmetic, you know, people wanting to get it fixed cosmetically, what are some of the ways that it can impact a person's life if not treated? Well, um, probably the one that comes to mind most quickly is speech okay. and if if you don't repair a cleft palate you're talking like this okay. and it's immediately obvious and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes um, while there's almost never anything wrong with uh, the brain of a child with cleft lip and palate if you speak abnormally sometimes people falsely assume that there is something wrong so okay. we want to get the speech as, um, as close to normal as possible, and most of the time we can get it very close to normal or normal. Another thing is children with cleft palate are prone to ear infections. Really? Yes, uh, very prone to ear infections, which of course can damage hearing um, if they're not managed appropriately, and repairing the palate can reduce the chance of them having ear infections. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, no one wants to eat and have food coming through their nose. Oh, which yeah. is, That's never right. a good thing. So is it ever too late though? I mean, are you seeing no, people it's who never, are later it, on in life? Um, very, very rarely. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally we'll see people from other countries who for whatever reason have ended up here and would like to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't think it's ever too late to fix it. But the timetable that I outlined is kind of the standard mm -hmm. uh, for the United States. Well, before we go, talk about some of the reasons why people get a cleft palate. What are some of the causes? There are a few um, things like exposures to different chemicals and things, but mm -hmm. most of the time it's just something that comes out of the blue with no family history. Really? Yes. Now, if a parent has a cleft lip or they've had one child with a cleft lip or palate, uh, yes, their risk of having another child with a cleft lip or palate is increased, um, not as much as you might think, mm -hmm. but most of the time it just comes out of the blue. And people uh, understandably think, oh, I must have done something wrong, but they didn't. Exactly. It just comes out of the blue. Okay, before we go real quickly though, talk about your different approach than others when it comes to repairing these. Uh, 
this is kind of technical. Okay, <laughs> so it might but, not um, be real quickly. Well, um, the standard cleft lip repair is called the Rotation Advancement Repair. It was developed by Ralph Millard, who was a very, very famous plastic surgeon who uh -huh. uh, died some years ago. And for a unilateral one side cleft lip, um, the repair comes up and crosses this part of the lip and then goes around the nose. Okay. I was able to devise a repair which leaves the scar pretty much mimicking this ridge called oh, wow. the filtral ridge. It doesn't go anywhere else and, it, and yet you do a complete muscle repair and uh, together with some colleagues uh, we published that um, a few years ago. That's incredible. It's a little bit difficult to do and it's hard to teach so mm -hmm. I don't expect it to catch on widely. but. Um, it can produce an extremely nice result. Well, thank you so much for all this wonderful information. But we haven't talked about the team. Oh, the team. Well, let, real quick, let's talk about the team then okay. before we go. Um, so children with cleft lip and palate um, require the services of a lot of specialists, um, just to name a few. Plastic surgeons, oral surgeons, orthodontists, pediatric dentists, otolaryngologists, um, speech pathologist, wow. sometimes ophthalmologists. If you get into bigger deformities, not just cleft lip and palate, you could need neurosurgeons. Um, a lot of times we need um, social services. And so that families don't have to run all over town seeing these people, the concept of the cleft lip and palate team was developed. It is the paradigm example of the multidisciplinary team and we bring as many of these services into one place as possible and the families spend a while there and see everybody they need to see park in one place. And there were a number of providers in the community who have served on cleft lip and palate teams in the past and we started talking last year and said, you know, we really should put one at East Cooper Hospital. And it was very enthusiastic and the administration was very supportive. So we have launched just this, just this year, uh -huh. the East Cooper Cleft Lip and Palate Team. That's so, impressive because, um, I mean, the communication, I bet, is makes for a better result, correct? Right. All right, well, thanks again for having me. And for more information, go to eastcoopermedctr.com.